top tier performance features all wrapped up in a $159 price point. Take one guess as to which brand it might be. Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the officialweartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on these potential bad boys right here. This is the Way of Wade 808 for Ultra, the latest within the 808 line. Probably one of the lines from outside brands, like not including Nike, that are very much Kobe-like. I'm listening. But before we deep dive into these potential bad boys right here, we do have a quick word from today's sponsor, and that just so happens to be the good folks over at Soul Premise. They provide premium or luxury style bags, but the catch is, is that they are all catering towards sneaker lovers. <gasps> They have a wide variety of different options and different materials and different colors. So as an example, this guy right here is just their daily commuter bag. This is essentially just a regular backpack, but the difference is that they can hold two pairs of shoes in there up to size 15. Excellent. I personally love these bags because when I go on short trips, I'm able to wear one pair and then stick a secondary pair inside of the shoe storage. And then instead of opting to throw in a third pair of sneakers, that's where I actually put my clothes. And then when I'm going on longer trips, this bag right here is what I typically like to use. It holds up to five pairs of shoes. On top of all of that, these bags are TSA approved. They can fit underneath the seats or in your overhead compartment. This particular one is made out of polyester instead of a more premium leather. So there's different options and varieties depending on what you want. Last but not least, this is my favorite bag and the one that I use all the time, mostly because, well, we're gym rats here and I also test shoes for a living. And this bag right here lets me do all of that stuff all at once. This is a brand brand new version of their gym bag where this one is decked out in premium goodness and I'm not going to bring this one with me because I don't want to ruin it and get it all wet and sweaty. So instead I bring this one. But the good news is, is that they both fit four pairs of sneakers, which is amazing. If you have your testing shoe, then your backup shoe, and then maybe there's a backup for the backup and by chance, maybe a backup for that. I don't know. What I like to do is fill it up with three pairs and then my leftover compartment has my change of clothes, deodorant, my water bottles, a basketball pump, and then for my AirPods and whatever else I might be bringing, there's a ton of storage options for that too. So for whatever your needs are, Soul Premises probably got you covered. So if you're interested, make sure that you click the link down below in our description box. It'll send you over to Soul Premises website, soulpremise.com, where you could check out all the variety of different options, all the different colors, what's on sale, all that kind of good stuff. Now the traction on these guys looks really interesting. It's uh, kind of like enlarged herringbone. So if you were to step away from the outsole and kind of look at everything, you can see that herringbone is going linearly, but it's also going laterally as well. I probably would have fashioned this in a little bit of a different way personally, but hopefully this works really well on court. The linear stuff looks like it'll be excellent. So I don't see any problems or potential problems there. Obviously we'll take these on court, take them for a spin, and then update you with a performance review later. One thing that I do find interesting though is the potential durability aspect of the shoe. Normally Chinese brands are very well known for being durable outdoors because they primarily play outdoors over there. This one uh, doesn't feel like it will be as durable. The rubber itself does, but the way it's implemented doesn't. All of these rubber pieces are kind of like applied to this TPU foot frame essentially, which is like the clear stuff that you see in between, which I find to be really interesting because when we've seen brands do this whole like split up outsole thing, it never really works out well. We've seen Under Armour try it, fail failed, Puma do it, failed. We've seen Nike and Jordan brand try it and both of them have failed as well. The only thing that I can think that would save the outsole from splitting away from this plastic is the fact that it's adhered to plastic and not to foam. I'm wondering if maybe the foam was the one component from all of those other brands that was causing everything to fail. Like the, the foam moves, you know what I mean? It's a porous material, it compresses and it rebounds and all that stuff. So maybe it was adding too much stress to something that should have been a little bit more solid like plastic. However, plastic doesn't last forever. It ages and gets brittle fairly quickly, especially depending on where your climate is. One thing that I do love though is the addition of the carbon fiber midfoot shank. This is something that has just been missing from so many products as of late. I know that it's an added cost because it's an added feature, it's an added component when you're manufacturing and putting together the product, but it's something that should be there. If it's not something like this, it should be something as minor or as small as a torsion bar, but something should be there. So at least this is there, I do like that. The fact that it's carbon fiber and the shoe retails at $159 is just kind of a bonus. Now moving on up that plastic, 
foot plate that all of the rubber outsole is glued onto is actually the midsole slash cup sole as well. And that stuff right there actually houses the cushioning system, which once again is another drop in midsole. On their website, they do say replaceable. So I'm wondering, are we going to get more options with this? We did with the last 808s, the V3. There were some that had torsion plates and spring plates and things like that mixed into it. So will we see that with these guys too? I'm not sure. I'm really hoping so since they use the actual word replaceable, meaning more than one option. So yeah, here's hoping. Is this the same exact midsole as the previous way of weight 808s? No, it's not. It is the same material, but it's just shaped a little bit differently. So I don't know if you'll be able to necessarily swap those out for this. But in terms of overall feel, it does feel fairly similar. This stuff right here, their boom product is kind of like an ETPU and it feels awesome. Like underfoot, it feels very good. It feels like you've got a lot of court feel with a lot of impact protection. So if you like both of those things all mixed in together, then you should like something like this. The only thing that I dislike about it is the fact that this stuff sticks like crazy to my sock. So trying to get the shoe on is not the easiest. It's not just the midsole though. It's, it's also part of the construction, but we'll get into that uh, probably right now. The upper is gorgeous. I think that not just this colorway, I think all of the colorways, they just look really good. The overall shape and silhouette is fantastic. At least I think if it wasn't for this midfoot strap right here, I think that they would make for a great on court and off court basketball shoe. The material itself is basically a textile. There are some hot melt areas. Obviously those are the TPU pieces. Those are the components that add some structure and some stability to the shoe as well as protecting the high wear areas as well as making sure that you can glue or properly glue slash bond that upper to the tooling. The textile is very nice and very forgiving for the most part. It's also extremely breathable. So I'm expecting really, really good things out of these on court. I hope they don't let me down. The last time I got too excited over a shoe, it definitely did. Unbreak my and then the back half of the shoe is primarily synthetics. So it's kind of mimicking that leather look. I dig that too. Would it have been better had it been leather? Probably, but is it good enough? Yes, it is. One thing that I think is a weird move though is right here. There are these TPU panels right there that are for what I assume airflow. They're perforated and ventilated and stuff like that. They're kind of letting you see through to where the eye stays, which are underneath the strap or adhered to. So it's kind of like those flywire-ish extension cables. They go from the lacing system down to the footbed. However, I played in the Air Jordan 2000 2010 and those things got really steamy really yellow and really foggy and super smelly really quick so whenever i see plastic like that on the shoe i'm just like you could have done some screen mesh and it would have done the job way better than this now speaking of the lacing uh, that's something that's that's primarily standard we've got a couple of different options here we got traditional eye stays or just kind of holes punched throughout the upper and then again we have those nylon straps as well and those go down into the footbed both of which great moves in my opinion but this tongue right here man this tongue is is just affixed to the upper right here. And it makes it so that you have a hard time opening the shoe. And then with your sock sticking to the midsole, the drop in midsole, like these were not easy to get into. <laughs> and then they were very difficult to get out of. So that's my only like main nitpick is just ease of access or ease of entry into the sneaker is not the best. And yes, it's a small nitpick. I know eventually you'll get your shoe on, but still it's going to twist up your socks and all that stuff. And you don't want that. Then you have to take the shoe off, adjust your socks and try to get the shoe back on without messing up your sh Anybody that's had a sock and get twisted in their shoe like that already knows how uncomfortable that is. Now, speaking of that midfoot strap, this thing is really interesting. It's attached via bungee cord. First off, I love that. Second off, it's just something that's like super good for different types of arch heights. Like if you've got a high end step right there, that thing should still stretch and wrap around and still adhere itself to some portion of that Velcro on the other side. And then if you happen to have a very narrow or slender foot, it's stretchy. So it's gonna stretch and compress and still lock you down right there. So again, I really like that. I do wish that it wasn't there just because it would have looked again, great for casual use, but this is not a casual shoe. So I can't really knock it for that. Now, as far as fit is concerned, they do fit true to size. Do keep in mind though, that that whole midfoot area where it was like difficult to get into and everything does really add some pressure to your foot, at least on the top of it. So if you do have a high instep or you have a wide foot, that's where I would normally say like, oh, try them on in store if possible. Obviously this is not one of those times because well, if you're here in the States, 
it's not possible. They're just not in stores. However, if you're overseas where they do actually have them on shelves, try them on, make sure that they fit you properly. Everyone else should be good with true to size. And hopefully since everything is a textile, it'll break in quickly. But with all that being said, what do we happen to have for today's question of the day, which is user submitted by the way. So if you have a question of the day that you would like answered, leave it down below in the comment section and hopefully we'll get to it. Okay, before I ask the question of the day, can I give a couple of shout outs? Sure. I know that's a little different. To people? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to thank do I Do I know people? Or no. these are our people? Yeah, these are people who answered, yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to thank everybody who actually responded to our question of the day in the Air Jordan 4 RM. Hold on. Nigel Shu. Oh, that's Nigel right. had a lot to say that video. Yes, he did. <laughs> Apparently there were many Nigels. <laughs> But the question of the day was like something about what's the dumbest way you've injured oh, yourself. Yeah, yeah. I remember. And so everybody kept me entertained pretty much all weekend long. Some of them were messed up though, dude. Like uh, you guys gotta be careful out there. Yeah. Um, a couple of favorites. I don't know if favorites is a thing, but standouts was the guy who punched the floor because he was interrupted while watching SpongeBob. It just, <laughs> it reminded me of our kid and how we've been talking to him about, about raging. raging. <laughs> In Fortnite, dude, I swear. And then there was a person who talked about their first ever dunk experience and how well they were that up there. Was, that one was f They didn't but know only, what to do? Yeah, only because <laughs> I've seen that shit happen in real time and like, it's like scary. You're most vulnerable in the air. But my favorite one, and this one had me in tears, like giggling to myself, so I'm actually gonna read it. Dumbest way I got hurt was today. I dropped a bottle of nail polish on the floor and knew I would pick it up when I got back. So I left it there and exited the room. When I came back in, I stepped perfectly on it and slid <laughs> into the slowest split ever. I'm 45 and pretty active daily, but when I went to get in my car a couple hours, I felt 55. Well, yeah, the slow <laughs> split. In my head, I'm like, oh, I know what sound I'd make. <laughs> it was so good. So, yeah. With that being said, in the midst of July, what is your current shoe rotation? Every day, basketball, in comfort, or slides? So basketball is always changing because I'm doing this. One day it could be these, uh, a couple days later it could be something else. So the most recent shoe that I played in was the 39s, but I always have my backup in the bag, which is my Sabrina 2s. That essentially, those and a Kobe 4 Pro Tro is my rotation, like those two models. When I play outdoors, I still play in the Sabrina 2s, unless I'm testing something. So that's just my main shoe so far this year. It's the only one that doesn't aggravate my tendonitis that I'm having currently in my Achilles. Now, as far as off-court goes, it's still kind of the same thing like I'm wearing usually a pair of Jordan 3s or a pair of Jordan 4s or a pair of Jordan 1s like that's really what I wear like it's it's just kind of is what it is and your bands I was gonna add those. And then there's my my daily, like super easy staples that kind of just, I could throw on, go anywhere. Those are my Vans, the new schools. I'm looking for the red pair, just letting you guys know. Apparently it's an overseas. Why is Vans doing that? Now, as far as around the house, casual, just comfort stuff, uh, it's only one of two things. Uh, she actually got me a pair of Burks. Yeah, baby, yeah. And uh, yeah, they're very uncomfortable at first. You gotta break the sh out of those things. Those are usually what I wear to and from the court because it's extra breathable. So yeah, or it's a pair of Crocs because those things are like indestructible unless you're at an escalator. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wear, man. It's just very simple. Uh, On-court rotation is literally a rotation. It's just changing all the time. And then the off-court stuff, my casual sh it's literally just my favorite things and I wear those. And then what, what, what would you call that? Like the slippery type shoes? Crocs or Burks, that's it. But what about you guys? What is your current on-court, off-court, and what, 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 what do you call like your house shoe? Is that what it is? Uh, they said slides if you use them. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you use all three, which I'm assuming most of you guys do, especially if you're at a basketball shoe video, sound off below and let us know what your on-court, off-court, and slide slash super casual like type of shoe is basically your to and from the court shoe. That's exactly what those Burks I would consider those like a to and from the basketball court shoe. I'd love to know what you guys are wearing. So again, sound off below and let us know. Thank you guys so much for everything. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you've checked these out already, let me know what you think about them down below in the comment section. Do you like them better than the last model? I personally do so far, but let me play in them a little bit so I can confirm or deny that. But again, thanks for everything. We really appreciate your guys' time. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, y'all have a good one.